Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. And welcome to this webinar of uh, Pointer Pro. I'm actually, um, my name is Stefan de Bois. I'm the CEO of uh, Pointer Pro. And I'm always very happy um, when I see uh, customers uh, using our tool for, for different uh, use cases. Um, and that's how we, we came, in fact, to the idea of this assessment, um, because our customers are doing really interesting things um, with our tool. And we thought, yeah, well, um, in fact, we should um, yeah, do a webinar about this and, and to, um, to inspire other people, other customers, prospects, anyone, um, to also um, do the same um, as, as our customers do uh, with our tool. So that's why um, yeah, we called it five ways you're not using assessments yet. Um, so we will present different use cases, but we will um, present them in form of tips. So it's really actionable um, for you. So three parts, uh, really simple. Uh, first, assessments, what's in the name? So, I mean, assessments can maybe mean different things for uh, different people. Um, so we, um, we will elaborate a bit, a bit on that. And then we come to the use case, as I said. Um, it will be more like um, translated or like presented as, as tips that you can uh, take home and, and apply and hopefully have a benefit from that. And then we have at the end uh, a short uh, Q&A session. Um, if you have in the meanwhile questions, um, feel free to, um, to put them uh, in the chat. Okay, um, first um, start with assessments, what um, do we understand? Um, what do we think that assessments are? Um, the name assessment is a bit uh, scientific or academic. Um, and we see also there we can have inspiration um, from our users that often use different names and when they create an assessment in our tool. So you see a number of these uh, names uh, in, in, in this, on this slide. And often we see that um, when you refer to, um, to the results, uh, to what the assessment taker will get out of it, that is often a, a better idea than just naming it assessments or survey. Like, I mean, uh, diagnostic is, is an example of that, um, or scan. Um, so you get something uh, out of it. Um, and I mean, that, that's um, more um, compelling in, in most cases. So if you have other names or if you think about other things um, that, that could be used um, to, um, other words that could be used um, to name an assessment, uh, feel free to put it uh, in the chat. All right. And then um, if we go to the next slide, we, um, we um, see the process. Um, so we um, have tried to simplify uh, things here at Point of Po. So we worked with three words, really easy to remember because they start with an A, ask, assess, advice. And that's a, yeah, a great way to remember the process, the process, the core process that we want to automate, that we want to digitize with our tool. And let me explain it um, with an example because that's often yeah, the easiest way to, to explain things and here certainly. So the example is here, financial assessment, yeah? Uh, financial assessment that is used, like for example, by a bank or financial institution to assess um, the risk um, that people um, will take or are ready to take with their financial investments. Yeah? So you could ask, and that's at the left side of the, the slide, um, how much risk do you want to take? Yeah? And then it could be multiple choice question, for example, a lot limited, very limited, typical questions that you see in assessments or surveys. But then it's not finished yeah then it's only starting because you're using that answer in the next step in the assess step uh, to do something with it yeah in this case it's to determine a profile high medium low risk profile depending on what you have answered on that question and then in the third last step you give advice based on um, that uh, risk category yeah? for example if the person is in a high risk profile you could say invest in stocks as advice and if the uh, person is in a low risk profile, then invest in bonds or fixed income um, investments, which, you, which have a lower risk profile, obviously. Um, so that would then be the advice in that case. And of course, I mean, we know this is a very simplified case, 
Um, in reality, you will have more questions, you will have uh, more categories, you have maybe a risk score um, from, from zero to 100 and, and different types of advice, um, like, like not just buy bonds or buy uh, stocks. Um, but it's to get the, the principle. Right? It's always these three steps, ask, assess, advice, and it's a good mental framework to, um, yeah, to, to, to use when, when making assessments and when automating your advice uh, delivery. Okay, um, then we now come to the um, to the use case part. Um, so we have five of them, and we hope that you will be inspired by them. So the first one is um, a very important one, I think. Um, what we see often um, with professional service companies, like many of our clients are professional service companies, is that um, they want to productize their services. Yeah, and why do they want to do that? Because it's easier to scale um, when it's productized. Yeah. Uh, digitization is, is one, is an important enabler, I think, to uh, productize uh, services for uh, professional services companies. And assessments are an important part of the puzzle to turn your questions into a digital product. Yeah? So how do you do that? Um, you first have to have some kind of model around the service offering that you are, um, uh, that you are selling. For example, Elevate or, cons or um, Customer. Um, from which you see the assessment on the screen. Um, they are a growth consulting firm. Yeah? So they help uh, scale ups with uh, uh, methods to grow faster. And they have a method, like a methodology um, of asking questions and giving advice uh, to those companies um, to do exactly that, uh, grow, grow faster. They have put that method like into our tool. Uh, it consists of several questions and then afterwards um, they, um, or the people who take that assessment, they get a, a nicely formatted report with all kinds of specific advice. And the advice is different if you um, answer the questions uh, differently. So that's great because this report, it looks like it's written by a consultant, but in fact, it's generated by the system. But of course, the system uses the knowledge of the consultants. Consultants have put their knowledge in the system to generate this, this report. Um, but it can be used over and over again for new clients and um, can be used over and over again without additional efforts. Yeah? And that's what productization of uh, services is, is all about. So I've, we found this was a great uh, example. Of course, yeah, before starting with a nice tool um, that creates these autom automated reports, um, you first have to have a model, like a, a maturity model, you could call it, um, where you really evaluate your clients or your prospects or, on where they are in, in the maturity level, ladder, like from beginner to advanced, if you want to have it uh, very simply one dimensional. And we have actually um, a helpful tool for that, or Canvas, um, where it structures your thoughts and the different steps that you have to take to develop your own maturity model. And that is really the first step if you didn't do that yet. It's very worthwhile to um, to go and, and to download this. We will send the link um, to this uh, sheet um, after the webinar and to um, fill in um, those questions uh, for your business. All right, um, then continue with the second um, use case or tip. Um, and this is about white papers. Yeah? Everybody uh, knows white papers, maybe has a yeah, uh, love-hate relationship with them. If you are in marketing, you probably um, have created some, some white papers. The challenge I would say is that it's both, I mean, it's maybe twofold. Um, it's time consuming um, to create a, a white paper. Um, and it, it has some evergreen um, level um, or evergreen means that it can be used not only for one campaign, but it can be used yeah, forever um, or, or like for a longer per period. Um, but um, yeah, the content of, of a white paper is, is not really evergreen. I mean, it, it, it needs to be refreshed. You need to create white papers um, from time to time again and again, and that takes then even more resources. Like a solution to those challenges, or I mean, or uh, another way to, to, to do it um, is um, to create the uh, white paper based on uh, survey or assessment results. Yeah? Um, results that you can collect um, with your audience um, and that you can consolidate in a nice report. Um, like here, um, one of our customers, Uptrust, has done with their marketing pulse 2024. And you can show uh, in a visual attractive way. Uh, 
those results which are um, like benchmarks, um, like trends in the industry um, in, in this um, domain, in, in this case, in digital marketing. Um, and that is very compelling for your audience. And also this trend, it's evergreen, it's not evergreen, but it's 2024, you can do it potentially every year or every so many uh, uh, months, for example, and then have always a new content uh, without having to invest too much effort in it uh, every, every time. So that's a great way to um, demonstrate your capabilities. And then if you want to take it a step further, you make it more personalized by putting an, an assessment, in fact, in front um, of the white paper. So you have the, um, the, the people that want to download the contents or the white paper. You have them uh, answering a number of questions before. And then based on the answer of those questions, you only select those pages or, or, or the content which is really relevant for them and, and not the other uh, content. For example, here it's our very own um, assessment about digital presence. Um, I think it's, it's very well made, we are proud of it. Um, but for example, here um, in, in this response, the, um, the, the respondent is still in the Stone Age because it's called Calling Beginner. So in this case, you will not give very sophisticated uh, advice about um, all kinds of um, sophisticated systems and so that they have to buy um, because they are not yet um, at the beginning of their marketing or the digital presence journey. Um, so you only give the relevant information which makes it more compelling and um, easier to digest. So if you want to take um, this assessment yourself, um, then um, we'll also send the link uh, in a follow-up email um, I very much encourage you to do so because you will learn something that I can guarantee you. All right. So the third um, use case that we want to, uh, to talk about is about uh, employee engagement. Um, we all know uh, employee surveys. I think um, if you don't do them, it, it's, I mean, it's obligatory, I think, to, to measure how your employees uh, feel. Surveys can be a great tool to do so, um, but not, I mean, not in a traditional way, I would say, um, because we are against uh, ending your survey with just a thank you, yeah? because we think that that moment offers, in fact, a unique opportunity to give something back to your employee. Think about it. I mean, they have invested time in um, yeah, getting through the survey, but especially in yeah, delivering you valuable information. So you can give, give something back. If it's something static, that's okay. Just like a checklist or what they can, how they can involve in, in their career or what have you. Um, but if it's dynamic, if it's personalized, it's of course better. Um, and that's exactly what our customer Talentis uh, did with this uh, assessment. Um, they are an HR uh, consulting and coaching company. Um, and they have what they call the boosters and blockers, um, like assessments where you identify um, like boosters and blockers for your career. But the key is that you can turn uh, the blockers in, into boosters and it's explaining you how to do so. And it's explaining you um, in a nicely formatted report, um, which is generated automatically after people take the assessment. And as you can see here, for example, you have a imposter syndrome it's in french but i mean you get the point you have right like imposter syndrome if you suffer from imposter syndrome that can be yeah considered as a as a blocker but here it explains how you actually turn that um, into a booster into how that can enable to um you to uh, progress in, in your career and that's a nice way to um to present uh, things i think and to um yeah to help employees um to um to move um to their uh, career if we talk about HR, you could always, or you could also use this in a, in a recruiting context because assessments um, are often like associated with HR, I think, um, but also with recruiting and new candidates. And you can also offer assessments to new candidates. And there also you can, you can um, give uh, immediate uh, advice and that will even if the candidate is not hired or is, is hired. In both cases, that gives um, a professional impression um, of your company. So it's kind of lead generation, um, but then in the, HR, um, in the HR context. 
And then speaking about lead generation, um, this brings us to our next, next topic here. It's lead generation in, in um, like in a commercial context, um, which is also a very interesting use case um, for assessments. So we all know that, yeah, distributing your content, uh, your knowledge, your experience, expertise for free, that's really a great um, like way to, um, to generate leads. And consultants or professional service companies should do that more often, I think. Um, it doesn't have to be assessments always. It can also be social media posts or blog articles or webinars uh, such as this one. Um, but the thing is, people always say to me like, yeah, but I don't have time for that. I It's all of work. I have my normal work at clients. How do I do that? So then the the insight that you have to have is, I think you always already are creating content at your client projects. So if you think about the, the content that you put on, um, on social media or that you distribute for free, um, that could be a side pro product of your content that you generate um, for your um, customers. Just like we do here, because this is the webinar is, is, is a, an example of a free content, a piece of free content. But we use really examples from our customers and that we have delivered um, ourselves through our professional services or asked to our customers to use um, as part of the content that we give here to you. So it's a side product, in fact, of, of the work that we do, and that's how it should be. So if we go um, to an example here, then we see that um, I really like this one. It's one of my favorites. It's one of our clients um, in the US, uh, Anna Sova, um, who has put an assessment a free assessment on their website so it's called um, free financial plan and I mean the name uh, says it all um, if you go so just google free financial plan and it is um, in, in the top results so they've done some some good um, digital marketing work also um, but there we want here just to yeah to show you how a good landing page could look like where you put uh, such a free assessment on so this is a good landing page because it's a clear call to action. Um, the button to, um, to take the assessment is above the faults. It's clearly visible. Um, and then if you scroll down, of course, there's a couple of advantages. But what I like the most and what would be my main, um, my, my most important tip is when an assessment is an investment for people because it's, I mean, they invest some time in taking, thinking about the answers. Um, it's easily... We say it's two minutes, but more, mostly it's, it's easily five minutes or 10 minutes, depending on the length. And you have to prove what they are going to get back um, in return uh, for that investment. And here is doing that very well, because here they get a very extensive report. And um, our uh, customer, Tom, is uh, talking to um, what um, they will see in the report. So if you have seen that um, uh, video, then you're more compelled uh, to take the assessment because you know exactly how much valuable information you will get back from it. Okay, and then go back to the presentation. Um, and we have actually also written an article uh, with more examples, more examples on how, uh, yeah, how you should um, or how other um, companies uh, put a quiz or an assessment. Uh, on the landing page and what you should do and what you should not do is that actually also a checklist uh, that you can use um, to um, to see whether you are doing all the, the correct uh, things. Yeah, these are a couple of tips. Um, I mean, you have covered the, the, the main ones. Yeah, also the social proof. If you have testimonials um, or good things that people or customers has uh, said about you, uh, social media reviews, certainly put it on the landing page. Uh, this is not only valid for uh, assessment landing pages, this is valid for um, all landing pages and also for your website in, in general, I think. Okay, then we come to the last um, use case, um, and this is about monetization. And it's in fact, um, I think, a bit the holy grail for um, every consultant or more specifically maybe coaching um, company where um, you want to scale your impact um, and you can do that by a certification program. Yeah, issuing a certification program is a great way to um, to distribute your, your, your knowledge and to monetize it without you having to do all the work over and over again. Yeah. 
If you look at um, our customer um, resilience builder, um, that's a company from, from the UK um, that really has their own methodology to improve resilience um, in, in your company. Yeah? Um, but they don't do that as a service at the, at the end customer, actually. They have packaged it um, into um, like a, a certification um, program. And the certification program consists of the assessment, but also of other things like trainings, like predefined um, templates and, and so on, um, that you can get access to when you get certified. Like other people, other coaches, they become uh, certified through this program, and then they can uh, use all the material, including the assessments for their customers. Yeah, And in that way, you multiply, we have really a multiplicator effect, so you can, in one training, you can certify multiple coaches and they um, will implement it in, in their turn um, uh, to their clients. And it's a win-win because for the coaches, um, they have something out of the box uh, to use uh, at their clients um, during their services. And you, it's of course a win because the coaches um, pay for the certification program and often they also pay um, per assessment um, that is taken and they pay something um, um, to you. So that's a, a way to um, get income without um, being dependent uh, directly on, on your the number of hours that you have worked. And that's something that a lot of consultants are looking for. So, um, okay, we are all almost at, at the end. Um, I have just the recap slide is I'm not going to read them one by one, um, but I hope that um, as they are quite actionable that you can, yeah, at least put in practice some of them. There is also not, we, you don't need a lot to, um, to put this in practice. You don't need like large technology tools or like um, a, a lot of um, expertise. Uh, you can start small and if it works, then you can um, go and then you can introduce technology or other things always at, in the second phase. So what we see, um, with our clients also is that um, most people or most clients start small with a lead gen assessment, which is often shorter because um, you're in, in, a, in a phase of the customer journey where the customer or the prospect is not yet ready to invest a lot of time in you. Um, and then you have operational efficiency. That's when you use assessment during the delivery of your project as a professional service provider. And um, those are mostly longer assessments. Um, because then you already have a relationship with that customer and they increase efficiency because I mean these if you would have to do it without uh, assessment um, then it would require more work to, um, to collect that information and to give the, the advice um, versus if you do it with an assessment and then the third step is really the productization and monetization as we talked about for example the certification program there's other um, ways to do it also um, but that's really when you have like the, the, the assessment as, as a product and you put it um, in, in the market as such, that would be the, the most advanced step. And the thing is with our tool, um, I'm not, this webinar is not to explain what our tool can do, but just, I want just to give the message that with every step in that journey, um, you can have uh, the right support from our tool, from a sim very simple questionnaire to the distribution portal and the dashboard builder, which are more advanced um, uh, modules in our tool to support more advanced uh, scenarios. Okay, um, I think uh, that was it. Um, I hope you, um, you found some inspiration and um, yeah, you can take something uh, home. I, as I said, um, for most of the things you can start small uh, try it out. Um, also, yeah, I will happy. You can contact me to to let me know to let me know. Sorry, um, how it went. Maybe if it didn't um, produce the results you 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 were looking for, you can also reach out to me. Um, no problem. I will be uh, there. I will be interested in your um, experiences. Okay, so um, we are already at the end of the of the webinar. That went uh, pretty fast. I'm, I must say. Um, so um, if there are any questions, um, feel free to, um, to put them in, in the chat. I'm just going to look in the chat here. Right. 
Okay, there was uh, Jason who said gap analysis. I assume that was like for the um, for the the different uh, words that you can use for uh, uh, assessments. Um, it's actually a good one. It's very specific. Um, it is a good one if you um, if you are if that is really the, the thing that you want to do uh, using uh, your assessments. Um, okay, Emma from uh, uh, Talentis, and the customer that we talked about. Um, says we are excited to have Point of Pro as a tool to offer this kind of assessments. Thank you, Emma, for the compliments. It's very appreciated and hope you um, can continue uh, enjoying our tool. So how many questions should a lead gen assessment have? Um, that's a question asked by Jason. Um, we think a lead gen assessment should not have too many questions, um, because as I said, you are in a relationship with the prospect, um, which is still, uh, I would say, uh, at the beginning, you're at the beginning of the relationship. So we say typically 10 to 15 questions with, as I said, like a clear statement of what the deliverable will be. You can, if it's a PDF report, you can even add a sample PDF report um, uh, in the landing page so that they can see exactly what they will get. Uh, 10 to 15 questions and then the um, the uh yeah the the, the the challenge is to have with as few as possible questions to get as many as possible to to, to give at, as much as possible uh, relevant advice um so that's something that you have to think about and it's um in your domain um depending on your domain um that you can uh, work out something typically another tip would be that if you're if you have you are in sales or you have salespersons in your um, company. If a salesperson has a first meeting with their customer, which questions do they ask in that first meeting? Yeah, it's exactly those questions that you have to put in the assessment. Um, Hanna asks, how do I decide whether I offer my assessment for free or whether I monetize it? Um, yeah, there again, I think, um, Free content is, is great to generate leads. So I think everybody has to have a, a subset of, or like a stripped down version of their assessment that they can put on their website. It's um, a great way to demonstrate your expertise and, and to also collect relevant information from your prospects in, in the same in the same go. Um, and then if you um, yeah, sign up those prospects for, um, for an assignment, um, then you can um, monetize uh, the assessments um, afterwards, where I would also say what we see a lot uh, with customers is the, the less uh, or the, 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 the scenario that we see less often is that they're really selling assessments like almost piece by piece. Um, more, mostly this assessment is part of a, of a larger service offering. Yeah? For example, a 360 assessment is not often sent, sold like separately, but 360 assessment could be um, part of a leadership boost program, for example, for the company's management. And, and there's a lot of other things also in that program. And one of them um, is uh, the 360 assessment. So that's mostly how it goes. Um, of all the use cases um, you presented, uh, Jason asks, um, which is the most common um, or which one should be prioritized? Yeah, we, we see, I think what we miss, see most is a combination of uh, the uh, lead generation and um, and the assessment, like the productization or the, the the productization of the services, that means the assessments which are du used during project delivery. Um, and then I would say, um, prior in terms of priority, you have the the slide with the arrow. I would start with the one which is less effort as the lead generation because it's smaller, and then you can evolve um, to um, to more extensive uh, assessments which you can use. Um, during the assignments um, with your customers. Okay, I think um, there are no more questions. So um, yeah, I want uh, to thank you for your attendance. Um, it was very nice um, doing uh, this webinar. Um, you will receive an email with um, the links, uh, the material that we talked about, um, and you um, will also find this webinar uh, on YouTube um, after we have uh, 
finished uh, the, the recording here so you can uh, rewatch it if um, if needed okay really appreciate it um, your attendance and um, see you next time bye bye everybody <laughs>